here we are. Welcome to Pond College. Show us Pond College, guys. We're here. We came all the way across the pond to see this. We're going to meet the team, see what these guys got going on out here. Gentlemen, the legendary people. This is George, John. George. How's it going? Nice to meet you. Good to meet you, man. Luke, Luke nice good to meet yeah. you, buddy. Hello. Kenny, Kenny, John. Hey, to how's Pond it College. going, man? Thanks, sir. Well, so show us is, around, man. So this is Pond show College. Show us your guys' place. It's pretty impressive out here. One feature here, this is the rainwater capturing. So we've got 25 aqua blocks. All so right. Captures all of the rainwater off the roof. That's cool. You got awesome carnies in there, too. Yeah. Fire's burning. That's fantastic. I haven't installed any of the walls yet. I've not put one in. So this is this was the first I, one we put I in. I think they look really cool, especially that part with the with the logs and all. Yeah. And then we put in a bog this year. It's just literally a case of a bit of pond liner and then just loads of peat. It's fantastic. I love that. And then McCarney's. Yeah. Ah. And you sun, had to go and get it. You just went and saw how big my tubs were and you went and got bigger <laughs> tubs. <laughs> That's how this guy is. He's just gotta go bigger. That's all. <laughs> and we got Venus fly traps in there as well somewhere. I didn't learn a lot yeah, about Venus flytraps yet, so yeah. I just started getting a few of them, and I just There's found out that they have to go dormant in the winter. I didn't realize that they actually have to go dormant. That was something that I'm just, you know, just starting to figure it out. So now that I'm getting my own personal spot built, I'm going to get yeah. the opportunity to play around with a little more of this stuff. You got, do you know the names of all these mosses? I bet you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one's Fred. That one's Tim. <laughs> <laughs> that one's John. That's the Catroni, <laughs> the Catroni, the Adams. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> well, I can see a lot of opportunity in here for you to actually put together like a combo of teaching people how to build a, a carnivorous area into the side of a pond. And yeah. then you get tons of ideas of, you know, how much you can do and how big that can be in the yeah. side of a feature. Because, you know, we do stuff like this all the time in our our features in Tennessee, we build a lot of big stuff, but it doesn't matter that you couldn't have a small pond yep. with a lot of that going on in the background yep. to naturalize it, make it, I would say, more swampish. Like yeah. around where my with, dad with lives tannin, up in the northern, northern Michigan, there's tons of stuff like this under the trees where it's all soft soil and it's just years and years of accumulated organics. And, so this yeah, is just trial, that's super you know, cool. trial beds, really, just to... Super cool. It's cool. So we're going to have a pondless waterfall coming down there and all of this blue is going to go. But again, this is for teaching. So we've got little different um, aquariums for all you got sorts of different stuff in there. You got snails going on. Yeah. What kind of eggs you got? These are frog eggs. Frog and also, eggs. And also there's lots of Daphnia and you see the, the sort of like the, you have to get your eyes in. But yeah, you can see no. Daphnia and beetles. and. Yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff in there. You got, so much nature there. going on. That's the Daphne, is little, yeah, little teeny things. So this it. is all still water. So there's no pumps involved. It's just literally a case of just a still body of water. And you can see, if you look at the back of the wall, it's completely teeming with life. Yeah. It was going to be the filtration um, and the windows to see what was going on. But then in the end, I just decided to just for the first year just to separate it. And then we've got fish in that one, more wildlife in this one. It's cool, different doing different things though in the yeah. lockdown pond. So this is the largest pond. A lot largest of aeration pond going on in here. We got the banners up for the um, for the event. That's super cool. Aquatic art live. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And you got water coming out of everywhere. Yeah. That's fantastic. And these are new in this year, so we've just put these in. And this the is basalt the... columns. This, yo, you got the basalt. Oh, there's a little teaser yeah. for what we got coming. Yeah. I love these pebbles. Yeah, so I, I, I did it intentionally so it looked like it was connected to this pond, uh -huh. but people were, people were stopping like they were gonna walk on it, so we had to put the bridge in. It's just literally bits of timber on the floor because the water feature finishes there. Gotcha. And people didn't realize, you know, people would be walking along and then stop and then it's, it's okay, it's just pebbles. So how is the horsetail here? So that big stone in the middle of the gravel uh -huh. and this big stone here is the edge of the liner. So it, okay. it will stay in, it may come over the top of the liner, but we can just keep hold of it. And um, it's not that invasive. Yes, it does run, but we just okay. cut it back and then it's fine. All right. And what, uh, man, where, where is your 
your gas for that. Ah, Talk that's good me. in there. Talk to me, you did good, where is it? What'd you do, put it underneath it or something? Where Under is it? Under your log? Well, tell me where you hide this thing. Uh-huh. And the, and the, um, the old faux stump trick. Con control, control unit is underneath there. So then we've got the, um, the basalt column ones here for the gas canisters. So there's a gas canister underneath there. Yep. Gas canister underneath there. And then he's put the control box underneath here. So he put this, so Luke put this one in last week, Charlotte. Uh, yes. Yes, he did. Nice work. Do you remember me talking about the NRG? I so do. that's the NRG waterfall. This one we built as a build upon day. Okay. A few of the big rocks I did before. All of the building was essentially done in a day for a build upon day. Man, I just love the way you got it all walked through too. You know, as you're putting it together, you got yeah. spaces to walk and bridges and yeah. elevation changes. And That's what it's all about. It's all, so it's for all me, super cool. so for me, it's all about the journey. It's the integration. Absolutely. All about the journey. So then this is the DIY garden. Um, so this time last year, we were literally starting to put this fence up. Uh -huh. This is Charlotte's garden. So this is for DIYers. We got a little bit of fairy stuff there. We got a seat, George put in the seat. Charlotte and George put this tiny little pond in. I think it was Good Friday last year. I love it. You got a little uh, drunken duck. Yeah. That's a Chinese dish, drunken yeah. duck. Yeah, I like this. My grandkids could go haywire in here. I like all the little sedums. You call those hens, those hens and chicks? We, we call little... we, we sempervirens or house leeks. We call them house leeks. Okay. Beautiful. I love all the little all the little short ground cover you plants. Yeah. Saxifrage. MJ's the guy that knows the real names of all the plants. I would call it the short green ground cover with the <laughs> pink flowers and the medium short green ground cover with the white flowers. <laughs> uh, I'm a creature of habit, you know? I just find the ones I like, I love that. I know what that is. You know what that is? Mm-hmm, they get some blue flowers, right? Yeah. That's the short my, green. My, my assault is palustrous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell the world what he said. It's a, my assault is palustrous. Sodas and plastrous. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, then we got this one. This, is, this we, speaks to my heart right here. This, this is, is the, fantastic. This is the, late, this is the latest version. This is um, awesome. We've just done the, the raked gravel. Love it, love it, love it, man. So this, this is the is, floating zen garden. This is super zen, man. Tell the people about the wall. I think the moss wall is one of the coolest things that I've seen in a long time. I love the dripping water just running out of the top of it and all of this. It's got so much, so much just awesome color and feeling in here. Yeah, so I took the guys um, waterfall walking in November mm -hmm. and essentially we saw the, the, the moss weeping and yep. this was um, Kenny's idea. So um, what I did is I put the framework up for the floating zen. We put the, we put the floating deck in um, about 12 months ago. Daniel from Brit Ponds came in and helped us do this. Kenny's the guy that basically put all this in. And it is, a, again, it's a bit of trial and error. Um, we've got ferns, we've got um, Lysomachia, Creeping Jenny, we've got some logs. You can see some of the logs are actually sprouting because yeah. It's literally green wood, but we'll see what happens. You know, we're just that's fun. Yeah, and the the way that there's some rocks stuck into yep. it, it's just cool, man. It's a lot of different textures and colors and substrate and water dripping out of it. So what I wanted to do is, so the brief here for this one was um, was tranquil, less water noise. So we've got a this is the noisiest bit, but we can yeah. still calm that down. Uh -huh. So this has really been. Um, a, an evolving thing and what we didn't want to do is we didn't want to compete with the NRG so when I built this this fence wasn't here and you could hear that monstrosity so putting that fence up just that barrier it does calm it down and we can hear it because we're quite elevated but if you sit down then it calms it down again uh -huh. um, and once we plant up in front because I will plant conifers in front of um, that as well but I also like the break um, so it's not all um, bamboo all the way around. I like the view. Um, we will probably put a gate on of some description um, just again to slow people down. 
and I like the textures, having a different crushed granite. Again, it's a different feeling, a different, it stops people from, you know, going in. And that's what I think it's all about, is it's the, it's the journey. And it's just absolutely gorgeous in here, this little spot. It's like a secret room in the back yeah. of the garden. Yeah. And it, I mean, the little, I, I just appreciate so much because I've built a lot of stuff out of bamboo out in my gardens. And I know how much work it is to go out and collect different sizes. Yep. And if you're drying it out and putting it all together, and I can, I can see that he's got stuff run through here. He's wired them and got them screwed and built the nice caps. And so this, this, this up here, I noticed from this, yeah. this artistic element yep. from way back when we were walking in, I saw the bamboo rays coming out up top here. And I thought, how sweet is that? So we and didn't, I knew there was something cool so we back didn't, here. So essentially a case of, we built all the walls, that's the sand being delivered. So we built all the walls and they come in panels. So these are, are the same, but this has been sun bleached. So uh -huh. the, you can see the sun bleached where that roll was. So essentially I bought a load of black bamboo and I didn't really know 100% what to do with it, but I had a vision and literally it's a case of, so I put the four foot, four meter pole in. And as soon as I put these five in with a little bit of time, people were coming, they, they were intrigued what we were doing because this was just the field. Yeah. So there was a berm all the way around. Well, the berm, we moved the berm back in October, um, you know, eight, 18 months ago, and then we moved this other berm back um, last Easter. So we've just been growing it and growing it and growing it and creating the rooms within in the gardens. What I don't want people to do is to look and just see everything. So. This is, this is the garden that we're working on. There's a little few more tweaks and stuff, a um, little bit of line, a little bit of foam, um, but at the essentially it's pretty much finished. Wow. Yeah, it's just got a good feel to it. I love the placement of these stones and the, the raked gravel and, and you have all, to duck all to get of it just You have to duck to leads, get out as well. Leads you through. So I put that in because you have to bow to come in. <laughs> I love it. And then this one, Freddie from Eco Water Gardens, he's come into the event. He put this one in. Okay. And I, essentially, what I do is I just give them the, the sort of like the, the kit and say, get out of your comfort zone, get a creative, get that aquatic art and just do what you want. So right. he put the sphere in the middle. Me personally, when he put the sphere in the middle, I was like, what's he doing? He's putting the sphere in the middle. And I was like, if it was me, I would have pushed it back into the bank. Yeah. But now it's in the middle. It's 360 degrees, so when you're up the top, it, 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 it's really good. So it was interesting having another contractor come in and put in the sphere in the middle, and actually it's, it's better than being in the bank, which is what I would have done. Because I've had, you're, you're, I've, you're pulling people from I've over there. I've been learning this lesson a lot with my boys, that when I give them a, a design, and they do something totally different than what I would have done, yeah. and it's like I got it in my head what I would have done, yeah. But then after the fact, you come back and you realize that it's just as good in a different way. And it's a way, it's just a way. There's lots of ways. After the Who's fish. watching the fish over here. <laughs> so we put that island in as part of it and now it, Luna just sits on it. So there's a couple of rocks on the lockdown pond that I put in for Luna because I knew that she'd be fishing. That's beautiful. It's sweet, man. <clears throat> It's I like hard this to, one, and it really does grab your attention from way it, back because it's, it's got the volume. Yeah, it's got and the volume, and this this deep sound right here, yep. this waterfall where it comes through this deep ravine, has got an awesome sound. I love that. People try to push water so wide yep. sometimes, and I feel <laughs> like you get so much more impact from that. Just it's just ripping through there. This is the view that I really designed the first few rocks for this sort of like area, and we've got a mystery waterfall coming out here. I literally just chucked in about 17 valves at the top. I had two lines going around and then just put a load of valves on and just so we can tweak it and do other sort of stuff. You got a good bit of flow going on this yeah. feature for There's the two, size, for the size. Yeah. You know, the path. So we put in a stepping stone just so you can get interactive with it. You know, if you want to get interactive, you can get interactive and you can go on an adventure walk. I'm going. The secret falls. And I mean, how long has this been in here? Not, not even a year. Right? So I mean, all of, the, all of this that's going on, this is the stuff that I love that makes these features look amazing. 
is this, this ground cover. I can't tell you Tongue. how many times, how many times <laughs> that we put in great water features like this and they just don't get a lot of landscaping. You gotta do these things. These ground covers that grow and creep in, they, they lose the barrier between the ground and the water and soften the rockscape. And that's, that's what you see out in the mountains and out in the hills when you're looking at waterfalls that yep. really, I think that's just the part that a lot of people miss. They just skip this edge detail. We spend a boatload of time on edge work because that's what one year, two years, five yep. years later, that's what makes a great water feature world class. And there on the edge of the liner, as you know, thyme is a terrestrial plant. Yep. Um, you know, you, you can use it for culinary um, points as well. So this, this outcropping of stone was the last thing that I did. So this was done last February, and then that's it. I haven't done anything physically in the garden since February. Okay. So the boys have been doing it. But what I wanted to do is create that, again, that journey. So we've got a few stepping stones coming in. So we've done a different way. Um, because I like the, the over sort of like the, the overlook of the gardens from up here. Luke put in the bird table okay. and he put in a small dry stone wall with waterfall foam. And I was like, that's great. The only problem is, is it's not brown ironstone because I yeah. wanted to create, uh, you know, like a brown ironstone bank. But I said, it's so good. I'm going to give you this garden, this area, um, and we're going to call it the small stone garden. So there's lots of small stones, so it's all Gabrian stones because we just buy lots of, this small stuff is available everywhere. So I basically said to him, you can do what you want and he put in a lovely pondless waterfall and it makes you come in mm -hmm. and now we're out of the wind. So it's a very exposed site. This sound is so different. Yeah. And it, it's like it reminds me of almost like the snow melt up in Michigan when I'd be up there and it'd, it'd come down and just that nice gentle trickling sound it's a it's a whole different like you could almost sell to a client on sound yep when you've got this many places for someone to go to be able to come out and find what's right for them and their brain yep. in their space like what's going to be the right calming sound for you because and, and i mean if you have no reflective capacity in your landscape this 30 feet out in your landscape is yep. not going to do you any good at all unless yep. you're going out there with it. Yep. But in a little closed in area, this right here would be plenty of sound. Yep. So um, from here, you can see the brown ironstone. You can't see Luke's blue stone from around the corner. It's only when you're in Luke's corner. I got you. And then you've got glacial boulders. So this is a big glacial boulder that we bought um, when we were doing the Zen mm -hmm. and it was too big. We were going to put this in the middle of the Zen, in the middle of the Zen pond. So it's like an mm -hmm. island that you can jump onto in the middle of the water. Right. But when we when we got it there, the five ton machine, it wouldn't um, it wouldn't hold it at that reach. So we, we just decided one, it's going to fill the pond up too much. Glacial boulders. What is this? Granite? Yeah, granite. I or, get to pick a spot out here somewhere and build yeah. a waterfall with people that matter for people that matter. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Go, baby. You rock, MJ. So we're in the Any Pond Lab. We call it the lab. And then you've got Pond College. So all of this stuff out here is for Pond College, for people essentially learning. Um, there may be a pond in the pond. Yeah, there's a pond in there. And you got lots of crushed granite here. <clears throat> That's the crushed granite. So what I wanted to do is, so we've got a load of stuff on top of the stone, but these all move so you can have stone that chuck it into the sand pit. So we've got okay. a sandbox, 15 foot by 20 foot for building ponds. So this Super is a, cool. this is a small, um, a small pond that I think um, Matt Nice and his boys came in. Again, just to practice, there's a, a small skimmer on this side. If it was me, I wouldn't have put the skimmer right in your viewing area. That's beautiful. I mean, that's how you learn, right? Yeah. Even, even after 25 years of building ponds, I still, every one I get done, I stand back and look at it and say, if I could do it over again tomorrow, what would I change to make it a little better yep. every single time? And I mean, if you, can't, if you can't do that, you need to learn how because yep. that's how you become amazing at something. And if you get content at just doing production, you're going to get stale. You're going to stagnate in your artistic capacity. 
and then you're just doing production and I think that's to, at least to me as an artist that's where I lose any interest in doing what I'm doing because it just becomes a monotony yeah and yeah. the reason why I put the sandboxes in is that's what I wanted to do when I was a kid I just wanted to build and then rip it out build rip it out the first person to use the sandbox was Charlotte and the grin on her face she spent an hour in the sandbox just putting in a, in a wall or an urn and literally, it, you know, it, the, the smile that she, she got that sense of achievement. And I was like, oh my God, that, that's what it's for. And it was only really Charlotte building for the first time in the sandbox that made me realize that, you know, that it is, it's, it's, it's that well, sense of accomplishment. And there's no fear, you know, yeah. it gives people the confidence that they can come in here and do something. Somebody who thinks they can't, this is yep. a perfect place for them to come prove to themselves that they can. And I say, what's the worst that can happen? It, it loses water. So what? It's in a sand pit. So Andras, when he sees that on Wednesday, he'll be like, where's my pond gone? And it was only literally last week. So That's we've cool. got people coming in all the time, which is... That's amazing. And we can build a medium pond in there. So 11 by 16, if we take out all the sand and put it on tarpaulin here, you can actually build a medium pond kit in there. Pallets are what Mike is sent up from or set, sent down from for the waterfall competition. So this okay. stone is from Scotland. So this isn't a stone that I so, typically use. This is stone from Scotland. Yeah. That so, just sounds cool. <laughs> so this is um, two pallets that he's sent down and some aggregate of some description. Um, and we took delivery of that last week. So we've got the three stones. So we use the glacial boulders. Um, whether they're the sort of like the salt and pepper or smooth ones, there's a whole mixture there. We've yep. also got Sarsen's boulders, which are these ones here. But I call them all boulders essentially because this is what Stonehenge is made out of, Sarsen's boulders. So what are you calling them again? Sarsen's. Sarsen's. Sarsen's boulders, yeah. Okay, and what, do you, what does this mean? It's just the name. It's like, why do I call you okay. John? Okay, so they're so just like a place where they come yeah. from or something? These have got you know, points of interest. You imagine framing rock and a spill stone in the same one, you know? Yeah. The, these urns, again, they're for Pond College, so they're, they're just literally, they're, they're components that people can rip in, rip out. So rather than getting a new one out of the box every time, mm -hmm. this is just components that people can play around with. Mm -hmm. Now we've got some waterfall Look boxes. This, this thing, I have serious uh, container envy. The content cabin. The content cabin. He's got windows cut into this thing. This is totally upgraded. He has koi fish. Uh, even when you thing even, we may even we when may you, have to we even may when have you close to the door. export your uh, your pond college building painter. He did great, man. I, that thing's I, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, my container is ugly as all get out, and I would love for it to look like that. When I said to Charlotte, I'm going to get a graffiti artist in, she thought she, he was going to come and tag it. And I'm like, no, he's going to, he's going to come and pi paint pictures. Cool. So these are the waterfall boxes. So essentially the reason why I put these in is, is to give somebody brand new the uh -huh. opportunity to build a waterfall in one day. Six hours it takes so people can come, have a bit of a tour, have a walk around and then still build or build something in six hours max. Normally it takes two or three hours to put a basin in and then, you know, just, yeah, have, have fun. So Luke put this one in, I think it was Christmas Eve and we haven't ripped it out. There's two inlets. Um, so he's got a splitter on there and then a brand new guy. Um, he's actually um, an arboriculturalist. So he does a lot of tree work mm -hmm. and this is his first feature that he put in. And it literally again took four hours and he's got the eye. You can see it straight yeah. away. Yeah, I mean, for, for scale of what it is, that could be like in yep. the corner of my office. It's yep. just got a great sound and the way that he pulled the water up and the stone selection. For somebody who's just getting started. To hide the spillway it, box. He's got it going on, yeah. So you've got the spillway box and, and you know, I'll pull out the whiteboard and show people what to do and what not to do. So then, you know, it's like hide the, hide the spillway box behind a stone. Um, so it's not like this, so then you, you have the pool behind, so it's not like that. Right, yeah. You hide the waterfall box, um, the spillway box behind, so you can't see it. Because there's nothing worse than looking at a water feature and you can see the letterbox where it starts, rather than the pool. Yeah. 
That's fantastic. We've just got endless opportunity, and it's great having a landlord. So you're with like a not farm. even maybe right about two and a half years. You guys have been out here. If and that, look how much momentum you've got going, and how many so, guys. It's so just the, fantastic. The lockdown I mean. pond I built on my own with a with a JCB in lockdown. This is why it's called the lockdown pond. It took me two weeks, two weeks to build it, and um, I. And I didn't want to go crazy. I didn't want artistic license. So I went, right, that's it. I'm going to have a large waterfall box, a single pipe, nothing crazy. And I, and I couldn't even stop myself from doing a gravity falls with a bit of pipe. And let me, let's actually, right. we'll go and show you that now. All right. I haven't seen that. So it's literally a pipe, as, you, as John knows. You've got frog's eggs in here as well, look. And tadpoles. Yep. So what I, what I wanted to create was a different sound again. And we haven't come up here. You see the fish have yeah. just seen us come by. Uh -huh. And I've got the aeration system in just to stop the herons. So up until I think it was about four weeks ago, we had weed all over the whole of the pond okay. to stop the heron. Um, so we did a drain and clean. We took out all the weed. And I said, well, what we'll do is we'll put an aeration system in so the fish can hide in the aeration rather than in the weed. Right. And then all the lilies and everything come up. It's still cold, as you can see. The fish are a little bit active. They're starting to think whether, whether food and stuff, so they are associating. Yep. Don't stand in your window and look out and think about your pond if, unless you want to see it from standing in the window. Yep. Put yourself in the chair where you're going to be sitting, and that'll help you decide where the pond needs to be and what angle you're looking down at. You know, a raised up pond has a diminished angle of view versus a lower pond where you're looking down into the water. I've heard the uh, guys, you know, the Japanese guys watching their fish, they watch them from above. Yep. Absolutely, you can tell what kind of, when a fish thinks you're watching, they act differently. Yep. When you're quietly standing above for a long period of time looking down, then you can observe your fish's natural behavior. That's how you can tell when something's going on when they're not acting right, because you know what they're doing in their spare time, which is basically grazing like cattle. Yeah chewing the algae off the rocks and doing their thing. Algae, sorry. Algae, <laughs> algae. We're in England. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very cool. All right, well, I, at some point we gotta talk about that. Did you see those signs back there? That's fantastic. I just love it. <laughs>